Hi guys, welcome back to Chase DH. In today's video, I'm watching all of the Pixar movies based off of the Pixar theory. And if you didn't know, the Pixar theory was created by John Negroni. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, uh, he even made a book on it, and it became really popular, especially when the Super Carlin Brothers made a YouTube video about it a while back. Uh, and then recently they did an updated version of that. Click on the card, uh, I don't know which way it is, uh, to see the video. Uh, and it is really interesting. It's a theory that all of the Pixar movies are interconnected into one universe. And I really love it. And so I'm watching it in that order. All of the Pixar movies. And I'm pretty excited since I love Pixar, but I've never watched them in the Pixar theory order. Make sure you go check out Super Colin Brothers' video about it, because it is really interesting. Without further ado, oh, before I get into the video, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, get that little notification bell, tap get all notifications, and get notified every time I upload a new video. But, let's get into the Pixar movies. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch The Good Dinosaur, and this movie, for some reason, is hated upon for a lot of, from a lot of fans, but I really like it. It's a simple story. Uh, the narrative's pretty good. The, the little kid doesn't even, like, talk the whole time, yet he has such a deep emotional, like, sort of character because of his, like, parents. If I remember correctly, I think they, like, they were dead or something, and... In this movie, you realize why the Pixar universe is so like ours, but just slightly different. And it's because the asteroid never hit. So dinosaurs were on for a little longer, even though they did become extinct, according to the Pixar theory, because of the weather. And so it's pretty interesting. And I like this movie. I think it's pretty decent. And it's definitely in the middle of uh, my Pixar ranking. It's really good. So without further ado, let's get, let's watch the good dinosaur okay guys so i just finished the good dinosaur and this movie uh first off i have to say has some of the best animation that i've seen uh and this came out like five years ago the water is amazing but just like a uh, spot he's really good and the like there's some shots that are so beautiful and they look like so real and they're just amazing. It's like some of the best animation I've ever seen. The first, uh, I'd say, 15 minutes or so, where it's like more family uh, focused, that's probably the best part of the film. I don't know, I really liked the whole part, and then the dad dies. Then it goes a little bit slow, and it's a little bit weird at first. When Once you get to that midpoint, it gets the ball starts rolling, and it gets really good. You get some emotional points in there, and they meet the, like, uh, uh, T-Rexes, and they're a really great, uh, point of the story, and then the ending of the movie where he sort of, like, has this dream with his dad, and it motivates him, it's so good, and then he meets with his family, ah, uh, this movie is super good, and very underrated, but next up is Brave, so let's watch that. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch Brave, and this movie for me is probably my least favorite out of the Pixar movies. I don't know, it just seems, it doesn't feel like a Pixar movie, it seems out of place, it's not that funny, I hate Merida as the main character, I don't know, her character's not really that great. The only thing that I like about this is because it connects highly into the Pixar theory with uh, the witch being Boo from Monsters, Inc. Uh, and it's a really interesting theory, and it makes total sense that the witch from Brave is Boo from Monsters, Inc. That's pretty much all uh, I know about. <laughs> I've seen this movie before, and I barely remember it at all, besides the videos about the Pixar theory and that scene with the witch. But let's watch Brave. And hopefully, it's better than I remember. Okay, guys, so I just finished Brave. And, uh, yeah, this movie is not that good. Uh, I don't know. The first off, I'm going to start with the soundtrack. 
it does not fit the movie at all. There's a bunch of just random songs in there that do not fit this movie. And I don't know, like they should have had a different soundtrack for it. And then uh, the animation was okay, it was fine. Uh, the story, I don't know, it's just really predictable. And this movie didn't feel like a Pixar movie. I don't know, it just felt like not as grounded as a Pixar movie. It felt more of either a DreamWorks movie or an early 2000s Disney movie. It was, it felt like one of those, even though it was made by Pixar. The only thing that I sort of liked was The Witch, because I know it's Boo. But otherwise, that was it. But next up is The Incredibles. Okay guys, so I'm about to watch The Incredibles, and this movie is amazing. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably up there in my top five, maybe even top three Pixar movies. It is so good. I don't know, this movie, it like, since it takes place in a time period, it doesn't like get old like how some of the other movies like like in a few years they're gonna seem a little bit dated uh but this one is so great and i love the movie it's just so good i don't really know what to say about it but i'm about to watch the incredibles okay guys so i just finished the incredibles and this movie is amazing I love it so much. It came out in 2004, and yet it's so good. It's still, ah, uh, the animation is super good. The story is top-notch. It's, like, if someone said, uh, like, has never seen a Pixar movie, and you want to introduce them to Pixar, I would either show Toy Story or The Incredibles. That's it. This is true Pixar at their best. And I'm excited for future Pixar because like of all the new projects they announced. But this is this has been the best of Pixar. I wasn't even born while this uh, came out. It's so good. The all the different characters you can relate with. Like each person of the family can always relate with a character, which is so good for this. Syndrome is one of the best villains ever. Jack Jack is amazing with his like billions of superpowers. And the story is just like, I don't know, it's so simple, but so good. Superheroes in the 50s and then now superheroes are outlaws. So it's 15 years later in the 60s, in this family of supers cannot use any other superpowers, but Mr. Incredible, he <laughs> loves his glory days, and so he wants to keep reliving all the superpowers, but it is so good. But next up is The Incredibles 2, or Incredibles 2. Okay guys, so I'm about to watch Incredibles 2. Now, this movie came out 14 years after the first one did, and some people were scared because they've been waiting 14 years for this, but it didn't, for most people, it did not disappoint. I enjoyed the movie. It was a great follow-up to the first one. Some people didn't like it, but I really loved it. It was really good. Some people said it was a rehash of the first, except instead of Mr. Incredible doing all the super stuff, uh, it's like uh, Elastigirl. But I thought it was a new fresh take, and I like all the different supers they added, and uh, the whole mind control thing's kind of gimmicky, but it's pretty good. The villain, I don't really like twist villains that much. I feel like they're getting overused, but I think it's fine. Uh, but yeah, let's watch Incredibles 2. Okay guys, so I just finished Incredibles 2, and this movie is definitely uh, good. It's better than the last time. Uh, I watched it. It has some great story elements, and yes, the plot is similar, just like switched with Helen, but I like it a little bit better because like at least they know, uh, not, not better, but like better than uh, something new because if they tried like something way different, it would be really horrible, uh, 
but I really like this movie. Uh, you have some great elements. Jack Jack, I like his powers, <laughs> except it sort of seems like they're in this tiny cramped space. What should happen? Oh, Jack Jack becomes huge. Or just stuff like that seems so, like, circumstantial. And I, uh, I like how <laughs> it ended, like, it started right where the last one ended, them finding the under- fighting the underminer and this movie has a purpose because like you want to see you want to see how they become legal again which is really interesting because they end this movie how they ended the first one with like another fight but there's not like a third story to be told so i don't want them to make an incredibles 3 though i would see it if they did ever make it uh violet is really good she's a standout in this movie uh Dash is pretty much the same. Uh, Elastic Girl, I feel like, moved lower for me. I don't know. I shouldn't really like her that much. Same with uh, uh, Mr. Incredible. Like, I still like him, but I don't know. I liked him in the first movie better. But, like, Violet is definitely way better. Uh, same with Jack-Jack. But then, like, Dash is the same. Uh, Frozone, uh, I like. They did sort of reuse the joke of, where's my super suit? But, like, super suit's there. And... I mean, like, if they didn't have that, people would be mad, and then they have it, and people are mad. So it's super random, but yeah, I watched Incredibles 2, and next up is Toy Story. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch Toy Story. As you can see, I'm in a different room. I'm in the main room, because my mom and I are about to watch uh, Toy Story. We're gonna watch it together. Here she is, little cameo. Uh, then after this, we're gonna watch Toy Story 2. But I'm pretty excited since Toy Story is the first Pixar movie and the first uh, fully computer-generated movie. It's a very uh, great movie. The animation, some of it uh, holds up today, but most of it doesn't. But it's still great storytelling, and I really love the movie. So let's get right into the movie. Okay, guys, so I just finished Toy Story. Now, this movie, as I said, came out in 1995, and... Uh, it was really good, and I thought the animation was going to be worse than, uh, what it actually was. It held up surprisingly well. There's some good things. Sid's dog does not look <laughs> that good compared to what they have now, but it's still a really good movie. The narrative and storytelling of it is so good, because that, like, pretty much is way better than the animation. And you just have a simple story of a new toy coming in, sort of replacing the old one. The old one gets jealous, and so when <laughs> the old one tries to take revenge, sort of, and then uh, you just get this nice storytelling of them bonding, and you see Buzz sort of realize that he's a toy because he thinks he's a space ranger. And it's a really great movie. Uh, and if anyone says what Pixar is, this is pretty much what Pixar makes. They make these great movies like this. And here is my mom's review of it. I really enjoyed watching this movie again to see how awesome their characters are and how real these toys feel as humans with emotions. And for the first time I was struck with, I don't think Andy has a father. So Chase said there's a YouTube video I could watch about it, but I'll probably just ask him to explain it to me. Okay guys, so I'm about to watch Toy Story 2. Now this movie, I think you can definitely put it with the original Toy Story and compare them. Uh, I like Toy Story 2 a little bit better than the original, but the original is still really great. In this one they introduce uh, Jesse and Bullseye and the whole Woody Woody's Roundup like character background is so amazing in this movie. And then you have the sort of twist villain. Nowadays, twist villains are sort of predictable, and they're sort of getting old, but back then, this was like a really great uh, twist villain, and it still is a really great twist villain, so I'm pretty excited to rewatch this film again. So let's watch Toy Story 2. Okay, guys, so I just finished Toy Story 2. Now, this movie is definitely really good. Uh, I definitely think it's better than the first one. The humor in it is definitely way better than animation like improved by a lot the animation was super good in this one and i like the new characters jesse bullseye they're really great the whole uh plot of like woody like he started having this like 
crisis. He doesn't know if he wants to be with Buzz and friends, or like if he wants an Andy, and or be like a collector's sort of uh, product. And then, but he chooses to bring uh, Jesse and Bullseye with him, which is really great. I love the whole like different parts of when the whole uh, team has to go and find Woody, especially the like new Buzz Lightyear who still thinks he's a space ranger. That's really funny. And overall, this movie is really great and I really love it. But next up is Finding Nemo. So let's watch that. Okay guys, so I'm about to watch Finding Nemo and I'm pretty excited to rewatch this movie because out of all the Pixar movies, this and Toy Story 3 I think I rewatched the most and I love this movie so much. It's really great. The animation with the water is so great. You got the simple story and you follow the dad who has to find uh, his son and it's really great. But then you also just see Nemo's adventures. So I really like this movie. It's really great. So we're about to watch Finding Nemo. Okay, guys, so I just finished Finding Nemo, and I forgot how good the ending for this movie is. Uh, <laughs> the animation in this, like, let's start off with that, is so great. The water is, like, it's really great how you can see everything in the water, and all the shots look so great. The story, it's, the plot is really good, because you just have... This, the beginning is, like, pretty sad, with the coral dying and everything, and then, like, all, like, 400 or so of the baby fish dying, except for Nemo, and you just see the father, Marlin, just grow, like, when his son grows up, he's so scared for his son to go into the ocean, but then Marlin grows as a character, Nemo grows as a character, and the two plots of uh, Marlin and Dory, like, searching the whole uh, ocean, and then the plot of Nemo trying to escape with all his friends, they're so great of these different plots. Darla, that's, like, Darla's one of the best Pixar villains. <laughs> yeah, love Darla. And then you have Crush and Squirt, who are so funny, and... Like, you have the, I don't know, it has a great humor, it has a great story, great animation. All around, it's a great movie, and it's really amazing. But next up is Finding Dory. So, let's watch that movie. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch Finding Dory, and this movie, I, I didn't think it was as good as Finding Nemo. I thought it was a little bland. <sighs> Wasn't really that good. I don't. I feel like Dory is made to be a side character, and we don't really need to know her backstory. This movie wasn't needed at all. I guess it was fine. There were some good things about it. The animation's good, uh, pretty much with all modern modern Pixar movies. But yeah, uh, I haven't. I don't really remember the plot of the movie that much. Haven't seen it since it came out. Like. Uh, four years ago, so I don't really remember much of it, but let's watch Finding Dory. Okay, guys, so I just finished Finding Dory. Now, this movie, uh, it was better than the last time that, uh, I watched it, definitely. Uh, there were different parts of it. Uh, the animation with all of Pixar's modern movies, it was really good. The water was, like, when the fishes were looking, like, above water looked really real, but it looked a little too real. I don't know if that makes sense. I know it didn't s seem like an animation. It, j it just seems super weird. All of the humans, like, there's this one wide shot where they all look like just robots walking around. They don't have, like, a personality, and it was really weird. Uh, I don't know, but the, the plot was pretty simple. It's sort of... It's not rehashing of the original. It's just, like, too similar that... It, I don't know. I don't really like it as much. Like, I would rather watch Finding Nemo than Finding Dory. The whole parents thing, I think, is a little weird. And, like, we didn't need to know that much about Dory. I don't really know what to say about this movie. 
it's fine. It just uh the the best thing about it, I will say, is the little like post credit scene where you see like all the fishes from Finding Nemo in their placid bags. And it's so funny. I noticed one detail is the guy who, like, cleans everything. His bag was, like, perfectly clean. But my question is, is near the beginning it says one year later. So I was wondering, does that scene take place before the movie? Or were they going across the ocean for one year? Then why would they want to go to the Marine Life Institute? But (laughs) it was a great scene, nonetheless. And... I like Hank as a character. Hank, I think, is really good. I don't know. I really don't think Dory needed her own movie. But she got her own. But next up is Ratatouille. So I'm pretty excited to rewatch that film. Okay, guys. So I'm about to watch Ratatouille. Now, some people have this as, like, their favorite Pixar movie. Or, like, one of their favorite Pixar movies. I think it's very overrated. This is definitely bottom five, which... There's only, like, two bad Pixar movies, and it's not in one of those two. But I just don't think it's, like, as good as everyone says. The last time I watched it, which was a while ago, the jokes weren't that funny. Uh, the animation was pretty good. Um, but overall, the plot is very forgettable. I barely remember parts of it. But if once I rewatch it and I get a fresh take... Hopefully it goes up a little bit, or might go down, I really don't know, but let's watch Ratatouille. Okay, so I just finished Ratatouille, and it was definitely better than I remember it being. It's still not, like, top three, uh, might be top five, I don't know. It it was surprisingly really good. Uh, the story is, like, the main focus here. It's so like crazy and outlandish that it actually sort of works this rat is like has some of the best senses ever so he becomes a chef and he's controlling a man who's like the descendant of this other great chef this great (laughs) gusto and it's really crazy but it surprisingly works i really love it uh, you got some great scenes. Uh, the introduction part is a little slow. Uh, I feel like Linguini, I don't know, at the beginning he wasn't, like, talking as much, and it was more, like, just, like, he seemed more shy and, like, reserved. And I feel like, the, yeah, it's a character art to, like, grow and be more confident, but out of, like, a few days or something, and I feel like, I don't know, if you didn't talk as much, you didn't still be, like, a great character, like Wally, for example, but I don't know, it was really good. The animation, surprisingly, it wasn't, like, outstanding for Pixar. It, it was good, but it wasn't, like, the water was really good. Those scenes were really good. But sometimes you would see, like, if you look at my hair, it's not, like, just, like, you see every individual strand. But on, like, Linguini's head, you would see every individual hair. And it was really weird. They have fixed that issue, but, like, they didn't have the is- that issue in The Incredibles, which came out before this one. And yet they had it in this one, which came out, like, I think three years later. I don't know. It was really great, though. The ending is super great. Uh, the villain, uh, Antoine Ido, I think that's his name, uh, he was introduced, in, like, an hour into the movie. Yeah, he was, like, in the main part, but they barely mention him, just that he closed down goose stoves in the first place. Uh, but, I don't know, I feel like we should have gotten the batch story, like, before. I mean, it wasn't really a batch story, but, I don't know, he was a fine villain, a lot of people have him... Is like one of the best, and he's not even a villain towards the end. And the ending is really good, as I said, where they open up La Ratatouille, and it's really good. And I just like the uh, Remy, I didn't like the narration for him, I don't know, I didn't really, didn't really like that part, but yeah, his story was pretty good. Remy is definitely better than Linguini, and overall, this movie 
was definitely a really good movie. But next up is, I think it's Toy Story 3, but it could be wrong. But let's watch whatever's next. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch Toy Story 3. Now, this movie, <laughs> probably because of nostalgia, is one of my favorite Pixar movies. My favorite Toy Story movie, because I grew up with it. And it's so amazing. It's like a sort of prison escape. And then you got like Andy and he doesn't want to have the toys anymore. The ending is so sad. But this movie is so good and I'm so happy to rewatch it. I'm so excited. But without further ado, let's watch Toy Story 3. Okay guys, so I'm, I just finished Toy Story 3. And this movie is so good. This is like so far my favorite Pixar movie. It's so good. You got the beginning where they're like trying to get Andy to uh, Andy to pay attention to them, and it pays off near the end. Oh, so great! And honestly, the whole story like I love the whole prison escape sort of. Uh, that type of plot of the movie it's so good you just see their whole plan and it's amazing there's so much character development for uh for andy for woody for buzz these characters are so great they uh have bonnie in this one which uh she becomes uh like main part of toy story 4 and you just have bonnie in <laughs> you have Bonnie in there, you have her mom, and Sunnyside Daycare. Lotso is one of the best Pixar villains ever. Lotso is so good. It's like, you don't see it coming. It's just a sweet bear that smells like strawberries. How would that be the villain of the movie? It was spoiled before the movie came out by, I think, one of the producers or something. But, uh... <laughs> but it's so good uh you got some the humor in this movie is so great you got spanish buzz you got uh the uh, some of the oh shoot i have this one joke uh there's this one really good joke that was in my head but i can't think of it maybe if while well, men need this i think about it probably not overall this movie was so great and i love it so much and like I cried three times during it. Like, I cried uh, during the beginning, uh, where, like, he's not playing with them and everything, and they're going, like, out, and he's, like, when, oh, I cried when uh, Woody and Buzz are, like, shaking hands, and Woody just, like, tips down his hat and leaves. I cried during the whole trash compactor scene, and then during the end when he passes his toys off to Bonnie. Like, that's sadder than the beginning of Up. Like, Up is pretty sad, but not as sad as that. But next up is Toy Story 4. So, let's watch that movie. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch Toy Story 4, and when this film was announced, I was like... What? Toy Story 3 in it so perfectly, though. But then when I saw this film, I was like, okay, I understand how Andy's storyline was done with Toy Story 3, but not, like, Woody or anything like that. Buzz isn't really in the movie that much, which is sort of sad. Bo Peep's the main character. Uh, they introduce a lot of characters with this, and I really don't want there to be a Toy Story 5. I don't really like the new characters that much. Doot to Boom's fine. Uh, the Fluffy and Bunny, they're fine. But, like, I didn't really think they needed to introduce anybody, like, besides Sp uh, Sporky. <laughs> I was about to say Sporky, because he's, like, actually part of the plot. But this movie is pretty good. It's not, it's, I think this is, like, the worst Toy Story film, but it's not bad. It's just that, compared to the other ones, it's not as good. But I still really love the film. So let's watch Toy Story 4. Okay, guys, so we just finished Toy Story 4. Now, this movie, it was better than I last remember it being. Like, uh, it was definitely way sadder. I did not remember it being that sad near the end when Woody goes off. What? 
like Woody's story arc is done with this one. He did so live happily ever after with Bo Peep. It's the perfect ending. Now this movie, I feel like it didn't really use the like older characters well besides Bo Peep, Woody, and sort of Buzz and Jesse, but not really. Like uh, Mr. Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Head, uh, Slinky Dog, uh, all of them, like, they're barely in it. Uh, our, what, one question I have is what happened to R.C.? Because he was in the beginning, so we know he made it, like, he stayed longer than Bo Peep. But then he's like, wasn't in Toy Story 3 or later parts of this movie? So I'm wondering what happened to R.C.? That's a question I need answered. Uh, speaking of the beginning, the beginning really good with, uh, you got Boat Peep, uh, like, being donated or, like, sold, uh, to someone, and then, like, she gets tossed around, she's a lost toy, and then Woody was gonna go with Bo Peep instead of Andy, and we got, a, like, a lot more than I expected of, like, young Andy playing with them, like, the opening is so cool with, like, how he's passing around you to see him grow up and then it like goes perfectly into college and he handed it off to bonnie and that's where we continue our story go to the fair and everything uh all of that road trip and during kindergarten class bonnie makes forky and forky uh this sort of they sort of made a joke near the end during the numerous post-credit scenes or mid-credit scenes about how toys come to life. But the, like, number one theory is, like, when a kid gives him love. So that actually makes sense with Forky of how he's alive because a kid gave him love and thought he was a toy. So that actually sort of makes sense. But overall, this movie was pretty good. Duke Kaboom was... I don't know, it wasn't really needed. I thought Bo Peep, like, we really needed more explanation. I saw Lamp Life, and it wasn't like, didn't really give that much explanation to Bo Peep. That much. But I really want, like, more explanation just in the movie by itself. I don't like that officer character. Uh, I don't know. I do not know what they're gonna do taking the Toy Story franchise further. Since, like, they introduce so many characters that it would feel wrong not having another movie or something. I feel like they should make, like, a short TV show. Not, like, 40 after question type of TV show. But, like, a TV show not really with the older characters or, like, Bonnie's OG characters. But, like, sort of. I'd like to see maybe Woody and uh, Bo's adventures. That'd be pretty interesting with, like, the rest of off the Officer, Duke Kaboom, uh, Ducky and Bunny. Ducky and Bunny were actually pretty funny, which I liked. Now this clip is getting pretty long, so I'm going to end it here. Next up, I think, is Up. Not 100% sure on that one, but we'll see what's next.